Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Wednesday, May 2nd, 1143 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the sea ice thickness as of May 1st, reaching a new level, new record level for 2018. It is turning up May 1st, according to the data. What does this mean for the mainstream? Well, we're going to get to Delling Pole in a minute, but real quick, I just erased an important document here. What does it mean for snow in May in Arizona? Well, Flagstaff weather is snow in May unusual. It, it looks so. <laughs> These guys are back from the 70s there. But according to the National Re Weather Service, boom. There's a decent chance, 46% chance of snow in Arizona tomorrow. Here's the cam right here, Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018. Snow hits northern Arizona, rain hits Phoenix on May 2nd. Are you kidding me? Did you hear about this in your hometown, snow in Arizona? Let's go to Delling Pole, Earth in the greatest two-year cooling event in a century shock. What does that mean? Guys, just got, got done a great radio show with Scott, the producer, after we interviewed David Taylor from Australia. Whew. You're going to want to watch that when I post it here in just a few days. It is a blockbuster. Our planet has just experienced the most extreme two-year cooling event in a century. Where have you seen this reported anywhere in the mainstream media? Well, you've seen it here almost every night in Oppenheimer Ranch Project. They're talking about this peak here in 2016 and where we've been located the last three data points, which uh, the consensus is in. The Earth has cooled 0.6 degrees C. Whew. And that hasn't happened since way back here. From February 2016 to February 2018, the latest month available, global average temperature dropped 0 0.56 degrees C. It's actually 0 0.6 now that I just showed you the April data. Now you have to go back decades, four decades for the next biggest drop. And you know what that means? It means we're dropping off a cliff as we predicted. Now this isn't the end. It's not going to rise from here, guys. It's going to continue to fall based on predictions. I'd be very surprised if this goes much higher than this. Because over the next two years, we should see this fall well below the centered running average. What do I mean by that? I mean we should be down here past the 92.85 lows. So we're going to be picking up data points far below where we've ever seen, including the ones we've seen quite quickly in the next few months. So we'll be watching that. Now to put this temperature drop in context, consider that it is enough to offset by more than half the entirety of the global warming on the planet since the end of the 19th century. I just showed you that it's bringing us back into 40 year norms and they're not reporting on this. Cold springtime weather breaks record across San Diego. Everyone in Southern Cal knows it's cold. Now, preliminary data from the National Weather Service shows several communities breaking all-time weather records on Tuesday. This includes Palomar, Vista, Alpine, and El Cajon, all breaking all-time records in Southern California. Now, April 2018 is officially the coldest on record for Eau Claire in Minnesota, where they broke the all-time record dating back to 1893, which brings us way back here into the centennial minimum, by over a half a degree C. Heads up, Eau Claire. Chilly up there. That's that maroon spot on the map we showed you yesterday that was 12 degrees below average. Now let's check the GFS model. There's snow right outside here. It just fell moments ago. There it is. Boom. <laughs> I'm right here. 
Guys, I hope you're enjoying the knowledge. <laughs> we didn't get there yet. That was a surprise. Let's check the GFS model. So in the next six hours, we're going to pick up another inch here out the door. We're going to see heavy snows in northern Colorado mountains, Steamboat Springs, north of Fort Collins. There were heavy snows witnessed in Mancos, as well as Silverton and the Central Mountains here today. And you can see heavy snows in the next six hours in northern Utah. It's going to continue throughout the day tomorrow in northern Colorado, especially picking up up to 16 inches. And then by Friday morning, we're going to pick up more snow in the southern mountains. Now watch what happens in this model as we move through May. North, Eastern Canada is going to continue to get some light snow. And watch what happens in mid-May here. British Columbia is back in the game as well as you, Oregon. We're looking at 6 to 12 inches of snow forecast for mid-May. And we're going to be watching the GFS models closely because these will change. And they may change in the positive direction, if you know what I mean. Now let's talk about the obfuscation from the truth. 2018 U.S. summer forecast, early tropical threat, May I south. That's true. Heads up, Florida. You're going to get an early hurricane. Severe heat drought may bake the southern plains. We already know that. We're in a multi-decadal drought here in the south. But look at how they obfuscate from the truth. Do you see any cold places on the map? Nope, I don't. But there's going to be brief heat in New England. That means it's not going to be a summer at all. You're going to only have brief summer respites, a few moments of summer in New England. That's what that means. They are totally lying to you on this map, and it's disgusting. And I'm not even going to cover it, but I'll leave you a link to it so you can throw up. Now let's go to the Weather Ready Nation map, and we'll see there's winter storm warnings and watches throughout northern Colorado and southern Wyoming and those areas I just showed you where heavy snow is going to be dumping over the next 16 hours on the state border here as well as Utah, but there's no warnings issued. Severe thunderstorms reach from the Great Lakes all the way to Mexico, including tornado watches for northern Missouri here and Eastern Oklahoma, as well as flash flood watches and warnings. So heads up in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states for heavy weather, including thunderstorms, moderate hail, and tornadoes in the next 24 hours. Heads up. Bullock declares statewide flooding emergency in Montana. This is due to the record snow that they recorded. All-time records being broken in Montana this year for snow. All time since records have been kept. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? This is not an aberration. This is an all-time record. So floodwaters of any amount are to be expected. All over, we're going to see record flooding because of the record snow. At some point, this broken record will be picked up by the mainstream and they'll start reporting on it. I hope so. Remember the seven Ps. Proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. So start preparing now. Montana Governor Steve Bullock has declared a statewide flood emergency. Wednesday declarations allow the governor to mobilize state resources and the Montana National Guard to protect life, health, and property. Bullock says recent rainfall and rapid snow melt of the record, all-time record snow ever recorded have combined to cause rivers, streams, and tributaries to totally come out of the banks across the state. And it is just beginning because it's just warming. And that's a heads up. Let's talk about totally fluxed in the Caribbean, storm to drench and raise, raise the risks of flash flooding in the Northern Caribbean and other areas. We've been reporting on flooding constantly every single day. Arizona governor declares state of emergency as the tinder fire chars 11,000 acres. Now, thankfully, in the last 24 hours, snow has fallen on this fire in Arizona. <laughs> Did you just hear what I said? Yeah, snow fell in Arizona in May on a fire. Thankfully, Arizona governor declaring state of emergency as it is now charring 11,000 acres in the Coconino National Forest near Payson. I love that area. When climbing there, Box Canyon, Christopher Creek, and Tonto Creek come together. Boom! Tons of bears there. Now, the fire broke out around 1825 UTC local time on April 27th, according to Web, and is now 11,000 acres. 
still 0% contained. Initially, the blaze was 200 hectares, and thankfully, the snow fell. It's going to continue to fall through tomorrow, but just a little dusting. So heads up there in Coconino County. Whew. Love that place. Earthquake rattled southern Iran, 31 injured in Tyron, a magnitude 5.2 struck a remote mountainous region, injuring 31 people and disrupting power and communication lines. This is only the beginning of what's to come. Earthquakes are only going to increase as well as volcanic activity. Shallow M6.0 hits near Easter Island. The Moai are totally shaken. <laughs> and that's a boom. Nothing out, out abnormal about that quake. Seismic outlook. Hawaii's rocking, folks. No other quakes to note. We're waiting for a large tremor. Hawaii's big island. On Volcano Watch, as earthquake swarms indicate new Kilauea eruption, we talked about the collapsed caldera. It is imminent, and that's a fact. Worldwide Volcano News. Today, we have Fuego, Karaminsk, Popocatapeto, and Dukono, Sakodajima, as well as others. Saku exploded today. Popo had a new eruption reported. Take a look at this, Dukono, continuous volcanic ash. And here we see Kediminsk, possible eruption. I, I wonder what caused this 200-mile-long black ash streak in the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, I think it's possible. Let's check the data. Kariminsky, this is a very violent volcano. It erupts all the time. It has recently woken up, went to sleep in the late 60s, the last puff in the 70s. But we're looking at VEI-3 on average. So this baby's going to blow big and cool the planet. It's going to be one of the multiple VEI-3, 4 volcanoes blowing simultaneously. We're talking dozens or more in the next few years, blowing at VEI-3, you know, every other day. That's really not going to bode well for food production and your sanity. Now, if you start preparing now, you could survive and thrive in the future. Plan a bug out plan, move to a rural area. If you've heard our radio show tonight, Scott McDonough, our producer, suggested many awesome ways you can start picking away and having an awesome plan to survive and thrive in the future. And that includes the seven Ps here. Proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> There's just no way around it. And the data speaks for itself. Is climate alarmist consensus about the shatter? Absolutely. It never existed. It was manufactured, and the truth is out, and it is slowly, monumentally mounting. You cannot avoid the truth. It is eventually going to hit you right in the face. This is from Inso. <laughs> Barren solar surface revealed as sun heads toward quiet period. Well, guys, we've been talking about this every night. The mainstream is picking up what we're putting down, and the CMIP6 Solar forcing model data set with the IPCC is going to be using next year includes the predictions of a declining solar dynamics. Look at solar cycle 25 predicted to be 20% lower by the IPCC. You know, we're predicting a much weaker cycle. I think solar cycle 25 is going to be 40% of 24. Mark my words. But it is bleak unless you prepare. If you're prepared for the complete shift in humanity, then you'll be ready. We right now have an abundance of food. We can't even, we have too much food to eat that we're growing ourselves and it's free. <laughs> Imagine that. We follow the seven Ps. Antarctic glaciers collapse could cause sea levels to rise more than a meter. Nonsense. Ice floats, you idiots. Anyway. The only way sea level rises is from thermal expansion, not from glaciers calving off into the ocean. I don't know if these idiots ever really thought about how big an ocean is. If you calve off all the glaciers in Antarctica, sea level will barely rise. There might be a small tsunami, but after that subsides, sea level will be the same. The ice has to melt. It has to be incorporated into the entire profile of the ocean. Then it has to reach constant temperature. That'll take a year. And then it takes decades for the ocean to warm and swell and rise. So whoever wrote this article didn't even take a basic class on thermodynamics, did not take a basic class in glaciology, and does not know what they're talking about. 
If you calve the biggest glacier, which we just did last year, did you notice sea level rise? No. Sea level's been falling for three years. I mean, you cannot continue to spout total nonsense, post it, and think you're not going to get caught. They're getting caught one by one. We're taking them down because they're picking up what we're putting down. Let's talk about the science of hail. Heads up. That's about a pool ball size, two and an eighth. Ever wondered how chunks of ice could ever fall in the sky? Here's an article. You can learn about it. It's pretty stupid. But it gives you a pretty introductory knowledge in how hail is made. Now, large hail can not only be deadly, but can be incredibly damaging to property. On March 25th, 2009, a major hail storm through Austin caused $160 million in damage. <coughs> Now that's nothing, folks. On April 12th, 2016, another massive hailstorm moved through San Antonio, and that caused almost 10 times the number. 1.4 billion in damage, and to this day is the costliest hailstorm ever for Texas. But heads up, Diamond's prediction is this year we're going to eclipse it, and it's going to be moving forward every year a new financial milestone. That's going to break the bank, folks. So you better be planning now to survive and thrive in the future. Let's talk about the big breakthrough that we've known about for over 100 years. Manure can help save the world. Its impact on yield and nitrogen and carbon and the prevention of runoff of these horrible products that are causing depletion of oxygen in our estuaries, our bays, and our seas. You know about the dead zones. It's caused by fertilizer runoff. If you use manure, this doesn't occur. And here's the proof in the pudding. Scientific analysis that says it is beneficial. It's a no-brainer. You guys are all idiots. We've known this for 100 years. The Rodale Institute on the East Coast coming out of Pennsylvania has proven that yields are higher if you use biodynamic organic farming. The corporations have lied to you. Now, the chemical companies and Big Ab are Big Ag are in the same circles. They go to the same golf clubs. They play golf with Trump. They're all involved. They don't give up about you. Start preparing to survive and thrive. Use poop. Human, humanure can be used as well. We have to let the Asians tell us that manure is better than chemical fertilizer? Are you kidding me? Everyone knows this, especially the farmer. If you guys are stymied by getting going to the AA RL7 site and taking your ham radio operator's license test, well, do not fear. Come over to hs4hamsphere.com and build your own ham rig in virtual reality. This isn't really a ham radio. It's a fake one and a really good fake one that mimics exactly the ham radio that you need to operate in the future to communicate around the globe when the grid fails and when the STH event occurs. Now, build your own ham rig. Hamsphere 4.0 is the ultimate virtual ham radio transceiver. Build your own transceiver using drag and drop systems, just like a website builder. It's easy. Over 100 plugins and antennas available. It's not really a ham radio, but it simulates one. <coughs> it, it communicates over a true simulated ionosphere based on real sunspot numbers. So what you do when you come over here is you learn how to get your ham radio's operator's license. So screw around with the simulator and then go take the test. It's a no-brainer. You'll get an A. You'll get your license and you'll communicate. Remember, proper prior planning and preparation prevents piss-poor performance, especially in the grand solar minimum, guys. And boom! That is knowledge. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Comment below if you have a question. I usually get to them all if they're not about Nibiru or something else nonsense. <laughs> Watch our Lee Wheelbarger Part 3 where there is practical planning information for the future, which you need to know. 
Share this with like-minded people. We're here to help. We love you. Thanks to all our new subscribers on Patreon, all our one-time donors. Without you, I would not be killing myself. But I'm really not because I have cannabis medicine at the ready. And that's a boom. Be safe.